What's goody my hoodies? So today we'll be dry canning or oven canning some rice. Stay tuned. dry out and they will be nice and sanitized. You have to start with clean jars y'all. Now we're going to place these into the oven and let them dry out. gonna let those dry out and then we're gonna get started okay I have my glass jars in the oven drying I have washed and sanitized them so now they're drying because you don't want to have any kind of liquid any kind of moisture within your jar when you're dry canning um, I also dried off my rings and 15 minutes before I get ready to take my jars out once I have you know filled them with rice then I will add these lids in a pan to the oven so that they can dry out as well and they will be ready to help get that seal that I need so why should you dry can rice well I'm gonna tell you why I'm dry canning rice because my husband's been on my back for a while and I've been putting it out. So now, you know, I'm more interested in doing it. So I went to the National Food Preservation website and I see that they're saying it's not recommended, but they do give you the instructions for doing the dry canning of rice flour and other goods. One reason I'm also doing this is because rice flour, things like that. They come sometimes with bug larva, actual bugs. Um, and I don't like that in my food. And plus, it will also make the shelf life last a whole lot longer and not be stale food. You can also dry can things like crackers um, as well. So today we're doing rice. As long as you don't have, if you have, as long as you have 10% or less, this is what I read, okay? As long as you have 10% or less of moisture within your jars, this will be a safe way to can. And to make sure your oven is set 212 degrees to 220 degrees or 225 degrees. Depends on where you are and your altitude. Once my jars get through drying completely, then I will start taking them out and I will be using the same thing you use when you're, you know, canning other things. I will be using this to get it out and I will also be using this and making sure to leave three fourth inch head space on my jars. I'll be right back. Oh yeah, and also they will have on the website some things that you might not want to um, dry can. One being, uh, I know some people do dry can noodles, pasta. Um, certain pastas you cannot do though. So please go to that website and look and make sure you're doing the right ones because certain pastas that you do, um, they have oils in it hence moisture. So keep that in mind when you're dry canning. And I hope you enjoyed this video because this is my first time dry canning rice. And I want to make sure I, you know, I do it right. I want to make sure I did not mislead anybody that I'm letting you know, you know, this is what I'm doing for me and my household. 
and maybe you should try it too because there's nothing wrong with having things that can last you 20, 25 years or more. Okay, so today I'm using the blue ribbon, uh, extra long grain, whatever rice you eat, then that's what you can do. I'm gonna pour it into this bowl. Cause see, I don't know about you, but um, when everything started happening, this right here, I could not find. I, rice, y'all, I could not find it at all. I want to do the, the cooked one that I saw Homestead Heart do, but I don't have a pressure cooker. So I'm stuck with doing the dry canning for now, y'all. So I have this here. I'm about to start getting the jars out and we gonna get busy. I've had my jar sitting in here for over 15 minutes because when I went to take them out, they still had some moisture in it. And like I said, you don't want any moisture in it. Some people will take one jar out at a time and do it. That's not what I'm gonna do because I have mine on the pan. I am going to jar them all right there. And then I'll put them back into the oven and get the other jars out. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your funnel and that's how you're gonna do it. And leave that three fourth inch head space. When I say three fourth inch head space, I mean right to that first ridge. That's what I mean. So if you think you have more than that, my, my jars are hot. You can try to tap it, but look, they're too hot for me to do that. So I'm gonna do it just like this and that'll release a lot of the air pockets and allow the rice to go down to the level it needs to be. As you can see, it went down some because I got those air pockets out. And you can see I have to add more rice to it. So that would be the best way to do it. If you don't have the debubbler that I just used, then you can always use a skewer and stick it down in there to try to get it to where you need it to be. I'm still short. You don't want to be over, and you don't want to be under. And we are exactly where we need to be. So, on to the next one. You know what? I messed up, y'all. Look. See, that's why you need that, because you will make a mess. I was about to straight make a mess. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do all of them and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna check them and see. I'll be bubble after I do all of them. Plus, my husband just called me and said, 
I'm 44 minutes away from home. I'm in Orangeburg. I'm like, oh Lord. Let me try to get these in the oven before you get here. So I can go get them while they're in the oven. And my oven is set again to 225. You can do 250, but you really shouldn't. You really don't have to do 250 unless you're doing like chickpeas or something like that. Um, I'm gonna eat some more rice, y'all. Okay, just a little bit more rice here. Because I have these three jars left to do. pound bag y'all it's a 10 pound bag and I just did three six nine twelve of these okay so now we're gonna debubble because we're probably gonna have to end up adding we might end up adding more to the jars you don't want your jars to cool off, so my jars are so hot. I don't think it's gonna touch it's not. And if you end up with too much in your jar, just take your spoon. I already did that one. And will go down and it'll let me know that I need to add more to that one as well. just do this they tap it down and that works just the same but that glass is hot so once you start pressing on that glass you're gonna feel that heat because that just burnt my hand but I did that to show y'all you can do it that way I just choose to do this and one it's a stress reliever just getting all kind of built up energy that's not good out your system have to add rice to pretty much all of them but that's what you need to do y'all and it's just that simple but I do recommend that you look at videos it's good but if you can find information that you can read on something and the best place to go for food preservation is the National Food Preservation website. That way you know you're getting the information that you need. And it's the right information. But there are videos out there from people that will tell you why to, you know, you should do certain things or whatever. But y'all, we are living in a food insecure time so the more you can do do if you don't have certain items like i don't have certain items for things that i really want to do so in the meantime and in between time i will be that rice to it because it needs to be a three-fourth inch it like I said, in between time, you know, I'm going to do what I can do with what I have. 
and that's all you can do in life, period. So, we're going to add... With your jars being hot, that's going to happen. I'm trying to hold it. But you want it to slide down in there because, you know, you want to have um, the right amount in your jars. more jars back here because I'm going to do uh, some flour. I don't use flour a lot, but I'll talk to you about that when I do that video. Why I'm doing flour. Some of the same reasons, really, for the rice, you know, the bugs and all of that. And then I'll debubble again and make sure we're good. Bubble again. We should be good now. Yep. We're right where we need to be. Remember, you don't need a debubbler to debubble. You just use a skewer. Kind of a little hokey pokey. So that's a 10 pound bag and 12 pounds. Uh, okay. Y'all, we are at our level. Let me show you the tops. That's where you want to be. That's where you want to be. And now I'm going to put them in the oven and we'll set the timer on it uh, and the timer will be for an hour and 30 minutes. In between an hour and 30 minutes to two hours. So you be the judge of your oven and how, you know, because when you don't have a gas oven, uh, you have to know whether or not the air is moving around. So if you feel you need to do more than an hour and 30 minutes, then do an hour and 45 minutes. Do that in between an hour and 30 and an hour, two hours time limit. Okay, and so I will show you the finish. Well, I'll finish it up once I come back from getting my husband. So as you can see, my rice is in there, it's ready. I have my lid sitting right there so that they dry the last 15 minutes and we're about to get this started. jars out of the oven and what I'm going to do now I don't have the um, magnetic wand so be careful if you don't have a wand when you're picking these up make sure your hands are clean because you know you have oils on your hand matter of fact I'm going to wash my hands again okay so I'm just going to put the lids on and it is hot to be hot because you want that seal to be good on your jars. Usually I will do them one at a time. I say usually this is my second time can y'all. So now I take the ring, put it on fingertip tight. Super de duper de And you don't want to have these in the oven, the jars in the oven, 
with the lids on because you want the air, you want all of that to escape. do an hour and 30 minutes. I did an hour and 45 minutes just to be on the safe side. Okay. And that's it. And then all I'll do is um, after they pop, then I will add uh, the date, you know, the month on it. And I will let them sit and cool. And then I'll put them in my pantry. And so that's all you have to do when you're doing the oven canning, dry canning for the rice. And now I'm about to do another video for um, some flour. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Um, leave me a comment down below. Make sure you share the video if you can. And also subscribe to Tommy Bikes TV and Homestead. And I'll see y'all on the other side of tomorrow. Peace over night. Thanks for joining Tommy Bikes TV and Homestead. This is my rice. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, twelve. 12. I have 12 um, 16 ounce jars of canned rice that I oven can. I'm so proud of myself. Um, I was putting it off because I was trying to find the larger jars, but I got tired of waiting, y'all. So they're in these jars and these will be the jars that um, will be labeled and stored in my pantry, my food pantry, um, not to be used right now. And um, yeah, it should be good for 20 years plus as far as, you know, um, everybody that I've seen have said that it should be good for that period of time and um, as well when I went on to the uh, National Food Preservation website. I do recommend that y'all go on to that website 
and um, read what they have on there about doing canned rice and flour and all of that stuff. Right now I have my flour in the oven. I just put it in there. So I have it, you know, I'm waiting on that. But while I'm waiting on it, these have been popping like, <laughs> and I love the sound of that pop, it, you know, and that's what you want. You want to know that it's sealed. You want to know it's going to be fresh when you open it and not have those uh, bugs or larvae or whatever, weevils in it. So y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed my dry canning, oven canning rice. I hope that you try it. If you do, let me know in the comments. Um, if you have any questions and I can answer them, feel free to ask. And if I don't know, I will find the answer for it or hopefully um, someone who has more knowledge than me because this is my first time doing it. I'm not an expert on doing this at all, which means you can do it too. So, get busy, y'all. Get busy.